What's up everybody, Johnny over at Witchcraft Whips and welcome to the first part of my basic knots for whips video series. Today we are gonna have a look at how to tie a three pass, four bite, five part Turk's head. This is a knot that I like to use personally, especially on heavier whips or whips with a larger diameter handle, I should say. I uh, feel that it fits my hand really well, it's very smooth, and I particularly like this shape of the knot. Uh, quite square, but with a rounded top. And I think that it has uh, quite a simple and elegant look to it. Now there are plenty of tutorials and instructions for how to tie knots like these on YouTube for example, but I'm gonna try to make this tutorial a bit different. The other tutorials that I've seen have always been um, basically just walking you through the knot. You go over this one, you go under next one, and then you go over, and then you go over again, etc. Uh, and I followed some of those instructions when I was just starting out and the problem that I was having was that I had to follow that tutorial every time I was gonna tie a knot because I didn't manage to memorize every over over under over over for the whole knot and I thought that you have to have those memorized so my goal here is to explain the knot with a few basic guidelines that hopefully will make it possible for you to tie these knots without having to follow a step-by-step -step instruction every time. And I just want to state for the record that I'm not a knot tire per se. I've got about, I don't know, eight knots or variations of knots that I use for my whips. And I know those knots, but there are people out there who do amazing knot work. So please forgive me if I don't use the right terminology or if I mess up in some other way, but uh, I'm hoping to talk you through how these knots work in my mind and hopefully that will make sense to you, making your knot tying a bit easier. So as we tie this knot, I will explain to you what is going on in my head as I'm tying it, what I'm looking for, and stuff like that. And we're also going to have a look at how to tighten the knot and finish it up. So we are ready to begin to tie our knot. We got our strand, uh, we got the whip of course, and uh, we got a fid that might come in handy. Later on you're gonna need a scissor or some sort of blade to cut the strands off. And again, what we're trying to achieve today is uh, not only showing you how to tie the knot step by step, my goal is also to give you a, a few simple guidelines to keep in mind that really helped me out when I was learning to tie the knots. When I was just starting out with the Turks heads, I thought they were very complicated, and they can be, but I thought that you had to remember every step of the knot. But uh, you don't need to do that if you know how to look at the knot and see what the next move is supposed to be. So for the 4 byte 3 pass knot, the only thing you need to remember is the first passes are over over and uh, that's about it. So we're gonna start out with our strand, place it at the base and as we're tying the knot I will be referring to this part as the bottom and this part as the top of the knot. So if I say go up to the top, that's up and down is coming down to the bottom. We're gonna start out at the base. We're gonna work the strand around to the top. Like so. And we're gonna come down to the starting position and go over our standing end.
then I'm gonna head back up to the top and go over that strand. Now, here comes the first guideline. As you're going down, you will do the opposite of the strand that's to the right of it. So this one will come down right here. And as you can see, this strand goes over this strand, so we are gonna go under it. like so and then we are coming around for another pass and once again you are gonna do the opposite of the strand that's to the right so you are gonna come up right here and this strand goes over so we are gonna go under that and we're gonna cross over the strand on the top right now I'm tying this knot very loosely so that I can move things around and adjust it right now we're working on our third bite at the top here's the first one the second one and now the third one and you want to set these up so that when you come around for your fourth bite, you're creating sort of a square up here. And as we're coming down, we're going to do the opposite of the strand that's to the right. So this strand goes under this one, so we're going to go over it. And it also goes over this one, so we're going to go under that one. And it looks like we got a twist in our strand. There we are. And we're going to cross over this strand on the bottom. And we're going to do our final pass for the base knot if you will and as you can see now this strand we're gonna do the opposite of this one again that's the one that's on the right and come up right here so this strand goes under that one so we're gonna go over it and it goes over this strand so we're gonna go under this strand So, and now we are forming our last bite up here. So, we're gonna do the opposite. We're gonna come this way, and we're gonna do the opposite of the one that's to the right. So, we are gonna go under. So, this one goes under, so we're going to go over this one. And we're 
gonna go under this one. Like so. And that brings us back to the beginning of the knot. What I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna even things out a bit, just move things around so that it looks nice and even. Does that look quite okay? I believe it does. We're gonna wiggle things around even more. Now, um, essentially your knot is done. You've tied a 4x5 part knot, but this is supposed to be a 3-pass knot. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take our working end and just bring that up following our beginning, all the way around the knot, until we got three passes. Now that is gonna take me a couple of minutes, so I'll just fast forward that part. But I will continue to tie the knot fairly loosely, it will tighten up as we go along anyway. But I'll see you when I've made the remaining two passes. And that is essentially our knot tied. As you can see right now, it's a bit crowded in places and it doesn't look very good. We got a gap up here at the top that we're gonna close. Uh, and we're gonna do that as we tighten the knot. And when tightening the knot, I like to start from the beginning. You could also start from where you just ended up and tighten that back around until you reach your beginning. Uh, but I like to start from the beginning and tighten my way to the front, or the working end if you will. So we're gonna start at the beginning and I'm just gonna pull this as tight as I can and that tightens this first pass up to around here. But from here on I'm gonna use the fid. So I'm just gonna insert it like this and pull a bit of the slack. We're gonna continue. This strand comes over and comes down here. I'm gonna move along to here and tighten it again. It comes down here. And we're tightening that etc. all around until we reach our working end. And right now we got a fair bit of slack out of the knot. And you'll see just how much slack I managed to get out of this knot. Even though know, it is fairly tight right now, but there's a lot of slack in there and you want your heel knot to be hard and firm and solid. So we're gonna work every bit of slack that we can out of it. So that's what I'm gonna do right now, and then I'll meet you back for finishing the knot up. And there we are. I have now used the fid and uh, worked my way around the knot, all three passes. And this is the amount of slack that I managed to work out of it. So we're just getting ready to finish off the knot. I'm gonna pull this one in tight. And 
end. This is our starting end. We're just gonna poke the fed under these three strands like that just to make some room for the needle. through like so There we are. Now we're going to use a blade. Give this starting end just one last tug and cut it off real close to the knot, making sure not to hurt the knot or the whip. And the same with this one. Like so. Now, as you can probably tell, uh, the whip, uh, not the whip, the knot still looks a bit rough, although it's very tight at the moment. Uh, you can poke around with the feed, making small adjustments where needed, just to get things to look nice and neat. But we're also going to roll this and we're gonna spoon it. Yes, you heard me right. Whoops. We're gonna use a spoon to model the final shape. And we're gonna use a piece of marble. There we are. So, we are gonna Start by rolling the knot. I'm putting quite a lot of pressure right here as I'm rolling. put a tiny amount of conditioner on it like so and we are going to use a spoon to round off the top portion so what I do is I place the spoon right into my hand Put that on top of it and then just work it around, giving it a fair amount of pressure. Also use it to and I also use it to smoothen out the bottom portion of the knot. Like 
like so. And now we just feel the knot right at the intersections. Uh, the knot might have a small bump, or you might feel part of the lace poking out a bit. You just hit it with the spoon. Until it's smooth. that Just a wee bit more grease. Like so. It's smooth, very comfortable, and it's very firm. And those are the main objects of the heel knot along with being comfortable, of course. So, there we have it. A three-pass, four-byte, five-part Turkset knot.